Listen, if you clicked on this video right here, that means you're looking for an alternative to just making regular baked chicken, right? So today I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to make a spicy Mexican chicken thigh. Let's get it. All right, so look, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inspect my chicken, right? Obviously we doing thighs, look at this. They leave this piece on here. I'm not getting ready to sear none of this, like, you know, on the stove or nothing like that. So I take that and I just cut this off, right? So I'm just gonna clean up some of this chicken if it needs to be cleaned up. Okay, so now that I got it all trimmed up to my liking, let me just check this last little piece right here. Oh, uh, yeah, it's fine. All right, so look, this is all that I cut off of there. You know, just trimming it up. Now, you guys trim it how you want to, you know what I mean? Because uh, we are going to be doing this on the grill. So how it looks now, we want it to have the best presentation, you know, at the end, right? So let me get this cleaned up, and now we move over to the next step. All right, so now we're getting ready to make that marinade, right? So I like to measure this out. You know what I mean? So we're going to use about a third cup of, look, this is that infused olive oil. You guys been following me for a minute and know that I love the branch and vine. You know, this is a garlic infused. Let's go ahead and get this up to one third cup. That's good right there. Set this off and then we'll pour this in the bag. Now, everybody not going to have one of these zip quickers, That's which is the actual apparatus that I use to hold my bags open. You know what I mean? If you don't have that, putting it in a bowl is great. But this right here, I just love this. This keeps my footprint small in my refrigerator whenever I'm marinating or even when I have leftovers, right? Instead of putting it in a bowl, covering it up or a big piece of Tupperware, I put it in this, lay it flat. You can label it, you know, all by just having, you know, it in a Ziploc bag. So the zipper quicker is like the way to go for me. Now, we're getting ready. Let me just bring this over here like this, right? So let me cut these. We're going to put two lines. We're going to juice two of these lines in there, right? Okay, so... We say Mexican, you know what I mean? Uh, and when I say that, you know what I mean? Uh, you know you gotta have lime, stuff like that. You don't have to have, but that's like signature in like the dishes that they make, and it gives great flavor, right? And along with that, you gotta have some cilantro, right? So one thing about this cilantro here, I don't have to like do it, you know, too fine. We just gonna like chop it up. We just wanna get some of the flavor. I know some of y'all say, hey, you don't like cilantro, but it's the combination of everything that's in here, you know what I mean, that makes it great, right? So we wanna have about a third cup I'm gonna need a little bit more. So looking at this right here, uh, we can go a little further. It doesn't have to be fine, you know what I mean? But to me, this is what you're looking for. So if I tell you rough chop, that's it right there. All right, so then now we add our, you know, dry ingredients in here, you know what I mean? We'll just go ahead and put them in here. Now listen, you gotta go to my website to get the full ingredient list, right? I just been doing this for a, a, a while and I know what one teaspoon looks like. I wanna ask you guys a question, right? When it comes to oregano, I don't know when in the grocery store, they have a Mexican oregano and then they got a traditional oregano. Somebody please tell me what the difference is. All right, now we add a little garlic powder. You gotta put a little bit of that in there. Like I said, I've been making it for a minute and you guys can adjust the, adjust, uh, the measurements that I give you anyway. You know what I mean? Ooh, yeah. Garlic and onion, come on y'all. Now we are gonna use this chipotle, right? These peppers. So I only need like a couple of teaspoons of this right here. Look at the size of these chipotle peppers, right? So I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna probably take three of them out. That's really about all that you need, you know what I mean? Is that right there. The rest of this, I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna actually get some Tupperware and save it and use it for future cooks. And I'm getting ready to mix all of this together, even inside this bag right here, right? It's gonna be a little bit on the pasty side, you know what I mean? So it depends on, I guess your ingredients, right? But what I wanna do is I'm gonna add just a little bit more of this extra virgin olive oil. And it, don't forget, this is infused olive oil. You guys don't have that, you can use your regular, you know what I mean? Vegetable oil works too. All right, so once we got everything mixed up, it's looking right, only thing left to do is, is just to add, you know, add our chicken. Now, I know some people gonna ask, can they use boneless, skinless? Yes, you can. You know what I mean? But I wanted some skin on this right here, right? So this is the way we're gonna do that. And then I wanted to get outside on the grill. Not that I couldn't do it with the boneless, skinless. I don't always do it that way. So I just wanna show everybody just about to what we have in here. Here go one that I missed. But guess what, folks? It's going in anyway, right? So we'll get that in there. This one's done, right? Move this. Now you guys get to see it up close. And now, Oh yeah. All right, folks, now I done let the air out now. I done massage this, got the marinade to move around. Remember, it's gonna be a little bit on the pasty side, right? 
So you got to work with it for a minute. But you see that right there? Y'all tell me that's not going to be great. Now, I'm going to go ahead and marinate this for about four hours. You know what I mean? Uh, overnight would be the best. It could take four hours up to overnight. Now, with that being said, I'm going to show you one last thing. See how it's flat? If you had multiple things in here, whether they were leftovers, you could just stack them like that. And if you were putting them in the freezer, same thing. Imagine how many of these you can get on the shelf. All right. See you in four hours. Okay, folks. So listen, I got everything set, put the lid on, set my vents. And I want you guys to tell me down in the comment section below. If you guys want me to teach you how to set up a Weber kettle for success, let me know. You know what? Uh, we gonna, I want you to type these words in there. Let's see. Let's come up with a word. Just type in outdoor certified. If I see that, I get enough people to say that. I'm going to show you guys how to set up any of these type of grills. Show you how it works, the whole shebang. Now, got that open. You know what I mean? I'm letting all my heat out. I got it. But I got it vented and set up for success, right? So, I'm grab myself my tongs, right? And we'll grab them. And listen, I'm going to put these down, skin side down. I'm going to start off over here, right? Look at this right here. Because I want to get a little color, get it to cook right on top of the fire now those of you guys already know what do we call that when we cook right over the heat that's right direct this process cooking right over the what we're doing is we searing it a little bit right putting some color on it and no i got a spin grate so it allows me to just take it if i feel like it's doing too much i can just take it and move it over here to indirect right but once I got a little color, that's why you guys keep seeing me take a look at it. That's what I do. I don't want to have them too burnt, you know, so I'll take a look. You know what I mean? So this one over here, I'll just put over here. That's good for now. That one, we put this over here. And this one, that's good, right? And then those is not getting enough. We just move them over, right? This is the same process that we do when we put it in the cast iron skillet and we brown what? We brown the side. I'm gonna let this fire over here settle down. I got everything on the indirect side, right? So I got it vented so that it keep me at a temperature of between 375 and 400 degrees. Excuse me, you know, a lot of smoke. And plus where I got it positioned, it's not getting a whole lot of air, but running this way and running right into my eyes. So we got it vented. We close this up just a little bit. I just been doing this so long, I know when I get about what I need to get to. So we're gonna let this build up a little temp. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and then we're going to continue it, you know, continue to cook it. Now, what I'm going to say is we want to reach a temperature of about 160 degrees, 162. And then we take them off. That'll keep them nice and juicy. Don't forget, it's going to rise about five degrees afterward. So 165, 175, I mean 167, and that'll be great. So I let them go just for about 15, 20 minutes. Nice heat. If I bring this back, which I should have showed you already, notice the coals on the other side. And the thermometer obviously is right here, right underneath here, right? So it's still reading the temperature that's over this side. And I got my chicken over here. That's how you do it. I've seen people put this over the heat. I mean, you do it how you want to do it. But if you want to do it where it makes sense and it look right, then let's do it that way. So now I'm going to take these and just turn these over here. I'll just start them over here on the direct side. Oh, man, look at that. Now, this is a whole lot of flavor right here, folks. Look at that. Okay, folks, look, I don't want to fake nothing for you. I want you guys to pay attention to this. Look, if you come around here, I'll spin it over this way just a little bit so you can see. See, listen, it's the way I have it vented. I'm going to always have these results. And if I just wanted to stay there, i close it up just a little bit more. All right, so we take this off and tell me right there that don't look gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? But look, I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Let's go ahead and just see what we come up with. That's a little bit on the high side for myself, but it's nice. I mean, this is telling you right now that these is right. Look, 160 and it's holding. These are ready to come off. You know what I mean? I just hit the little bone. Let me see. Let me get down into the, oh yeah, this is, all of this is ready. 67. So listen, if you want to ensure and make sure your, your chicken come out juicy, and don't forget, that's that dark meat. When I bite that, that's, mm, it's finna just do its thing. Hey, so let me hurry up and get that off. Let's cut it up. Let's eat it. And don't forget, we put that Mexican flavor on there. Ooh, wee. Okay, folks, so look, after looking at this beauty right here, listen, and then, you know what? We just getting away from just always having it, just always smoke. There's certain flavors we can put on there that it just enhance it along with the smoke, right? And this right here is refreshing. I'm gonna give you guys one idea. 
Listen, you could have just did this with boneless, skinless, and then put this over some, uh, hey, you know what? This would have made a cold, a spicy Mexican chicken salad. Mm. All right, so with that being said, look, I'm gonna get in here and just, you know, you see it try to rip on its own, but you see that right there? You see that little pinkish color right there? That's from the smoke from the, uh, from the grill. But I ain't gotta tell y'all, y'all already know. Hey, so listen, we wanna taste this flavor. Check it out, I'm not finna over talk. Cheers, y'all. Mm. Man, this is good. Hey, check it out. Before I wipe my mouth, I snuck another little bite in there. Now look, I got people behind the camera saying they ready to eat. You know what I mean? Uh, listen, nice, refreshing. Uh, does it immediately say something as far as uh, being on the Spanish side, like a uh, Mexican? No, it just tastes like some great tasting uh, marinated chicken. And the spiciness of this right here is just, it's okay. Now, if you guys want to like step it up a little bit, we can add like a, a teaspoon of uh, cayenne pepper or something like that. But this right here is just right, especially for my palate. Now, listen, I'm not finna over talk it. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget, if you guys want to learn how to set up the grill and want to know how it works and how to have success, and we're going to use the word outdoor certified. When I see that, that's going to go ahead and make me do it. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say, hey, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button. And I don't mean this loosely. I want you guys to tell everybody out there. Check this out. There's a channel out here to simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. Guess what, folks? Happy spring and let's get it. I'm out. Peace.